Thank you, Neil. The smoking ceremony, the oil I use is, the oil is made by the elders and they do a ceremony, um, they sing the oil and the elders, particularly the grandmothers, when babies are born, they smoke the babies because that's really important because the baby's spirit is small and they need to smoke that spirit and give it strength. We do smoking ceremonies when there's been a death and to encourage the spirit to move on. Um, at an event, uh, a cleansing and a new beginning, we do the smoking ceremony. And it was a real honour to be able to do the smoking ceremony. My elders from a young age taught me how to do the smoking ceremony and the spiritual component of it. I'm feeling quite overwhelmed to, to see so many Catholics all together. And, um, uh, and it's, it is important to me because um, I come from a strong Catholic family, an Aboriginal family, and um, uh, being Catholic to my mum was really important because her grandmother had 15 children. And they, she lived on three missions around South Australia and um, a lot of the public schools those days wouldn't take them in, but it was the Catholics that schools that took them in and educated them. So my mum is very Catholic and she taught us um, about the Catholic faith and the importance of and the power of prayer. Um, my grandfather um, was part of the Stolen Generation and his father was killed on the Western Front in World War I. And um, those days the Stolen Generation was rife. And because my grandfather didn't have a father because he was killed in the war, um, he was placed with an Irish Catholic family and that's how we become Catholic. And um, it's something that's really important to us. And the missions that my mum grew up on weren't Catholic. And uh, there was no way in the world my grandfather would go to their church. They used to walk many miles to go to the Catholic church. Um, I'd just like to thank Bill Denny for playing the tap sticks and calling the spirits and Michael Connolly on the didgeridoo. My grandmother, Linda Walker, is a Ghana elder, so I'm going to conduct a, a welcome to country. It's really important to do a welcome to country, and it's a great honour for me to do a welcome to country, because once we welcome you, we have a duty of care to make sure that you're safe and taken care of. And that's something that's really important to us, and it comes to that caring and sharing. I'll just say a few words in my grandmother's language. Ghana, yunamani, mania, which is a greeting. Morindi, Nanga, Gunya, Morindi, Komaku, Chuwila, Chilbruki. That's um, saying that it's important that we walk together because when we walk together, we learn about each other. And, and one of the things we learn about each other as human beings is in actual fact, we've got more in common than differences. We will have differences, but instead of being fearful of the differences, we celebrate the differences because that's where we learn from each other. And I think that's what makes Australia such a unique country, is we're made up of many different people from different cultures. And if we can take the best out of each culture, it's got to build a greater society. And I think um, in Australia today, we're reaping the benefits of that. I think we're dealing better than most places around the world with COVID-19. And I feel very proud to be South Australian because we're doing a very good job here in South Australia. I'm going to sing a little welcome song now. It's a song my grandfather taught me. It's a spiritual song because we're spiritual people. It's a cleansing, but it's the, the key thing in this message and song is that we all come together as one. I think this evening is really important. Um, Sarah Moffat and myself were on the plenary council and we travelled around the country um, gathering information, um, trying to put it all together. 
Um, the plenary council was really important because the last time we did it was in, they had the plenary, the church had the plenary council was in 1937, and I remember that date because it's the date my father was born. Um, but um, it's interesting because we had a lot of people telling us, if there's no changes, we're out. Then we had another lot of people saying, if there's too many changes, we're out. Um, but I think this is a great opportunity for us to come together um, and gather information so it can build us up. Um, being Catholic is very important. Um, and I think bringing us all together and dialogue and sharing and everyone having their voice. I'd just like to finish uh, with a little story. And some of you may have heard it, but I was talking to a Catholic priest in New South Wales who'd retired. But like a lot of priests, they don't really retire. And the Aboriginal community heard that he had retired, so they went and approached him and said, look, can you come and do some work with us? And he had an interest in that area, so we did. And um, one of the elders went over to him and said, look, we've got all these problems. We've got alcohol problems, we've got drug problems, we've got unemployment problems, we've got problems with kids at school getting in trouble, all these problems. And he just kept on going on with these problems and the priest was looking at him and the priest was thinking, gee, what have I got myself into? With all these problems, I'm not sure you know, if I've actually got the answer. And he paused for a moment and then the Aboriginal elder said to him, he said, Father, do you know what? We've got all these problems, but we'll be all right because we're Catholic and the Master is behind us. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs>